we're going to try to work out the technical side of it, and then we'll be ready to roll. All right, so I oftentimes I'm already kind of loud, but we have to talk into the microphone because we're recording this to post it, post it later. Uh, but thanks for coming tonight, talking about social emotional learning, specifically the trails program here at Dundee Elementary School. Uh, my name is August Ost. I'm the elementary principal. Um, I think this is like year seven or so. Um, so in, in the district, I think I was hired in the district in 2007, first as a teacher and now as the elementary school principal. So, so been around for a while. And then with me tonight, we have, uh, I'll let Ms. Plum and Ms. Keller introduce some, some themselves. Hey, I'm Amanda Plum. I'm the elementary assistant principal and the director of early childhood education. And I'm Natalie Keller. I'm the general ed social worker. Yeah, so thanks again. We do appreciate you being here. We understand that so far, um, Ms. Winnell and Mr. Manuzak, they did a lot of the speaking for the district, uh, which is only, I mean, right, right for being the superintendent and the assistant superintendent. But we appreciate Mr. Manuzak and Ms. Winnell giving us the opportunity as the elementary uh, to speak exactly to what's going on in our building and, and what our teachers are doing. So it's a good opportunity tonight. Um, hopefully, I think more people will probably trickle in, but we'll definitely get this posted later in the week. Um, and and the, there's a lot of Q&As, a lot of questions that were submitted early. We won't get to all of them tonight, but we do plan on um, following this agenda. We have a few slides to hit on. We're not going to do a lot of talking initially because we want to make sure there's time for us to have some open dialogue and go back and forth and answer whatever questions you might have. Um, so for the Q&A session, some questions, we posted a link on Facebook yesterday, questions that were submitted in advance, we'll start hitting on them right away. The ones that came in towards the end of the day today, we're, we'll get to them, but we're going to get the questions from those that are with us tonight first. Um, so probably a lot of time for question and answers, which is what we wanted, because we want you to feel comfortable in what's going on in the building. So uh, thank you to Mr. Manuzak and Ms. Winnell. I wanted to add that. There's our agenda in our first slide. What is social emotional learning? Ms. Plum's going to take. All right. So we just wanted to define um, what social emotional learning is and what we're focusing on. So the things that we have chosen to focus on, and I apologize, I, I hate when presenters read slides, but also for the presentation purposes, it's helpful for those at home who maybe can't see the writing. Um, Self-awareness that we're focusing on, and it supports individuals in recognizing their own feelings, interests, strengths, and limitations. We're, we're focusing on relationship skills, um, SEL models, pro-social behavior, and demonstrates positive social skills in order to develop meaningful relationships. Responsible decision-making. It supports individuals in making ethical decisions and strengthens the ability to develop appropriate solutions to identified problems. Self-management, that's a big focus here at the elementary. It supports individuals in regulating emotions and in managing daily stressors. And then social awareness, it teaches individuals to take the perspective of others and appreciate similarities and differences. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to talk about what TRAILS is, and it stands for Transforming Research into Action to Improve the Lives of Students, um, and it promotes students' mental health, um, fosters CASEL's five SEL competen competencies, which are those areas that Mrs. Plum just um, explained. It's designed to be used flexibly, and we will go over that a little later when we dive into a lesson, but... Um, Teachers are able to modify it to meet the needs of their students and their day um, requires minimal prep time and resources, increases access to effective strategies, equipping students with those coping skills, um, in includes accompanying materials, um, and it was developed with instructors. Um, so trails is broken down into four curriculum areas, kindergarten through second, third through fifth, six through eighth and nine through 12. Um, each curriculum contains 20 different lessons and they're broken down into different modules that um, are self-awareness, self-management, social awareness, relationship skills, and responsible decision-making. All right, next we wanted to go into the history, just give you a little background about um, the trails and social emotional learning at Dundee Elementary. So we started out um, 
with morning meetings. And actually Mr. Ost had gone to a, a conference and they had really shared about how that helps build culture in the classroom, gives each child like a chance to share something throughout the day that gives teachers a chance to get to know their students better. So we have been doing this since 2017-18 school year. Um, it's five to 10 minutes generally in the morning. We call it a morning meeting. Some teachers do it in the afternoon though. Um, and the goal of the morning meetings is just to create a, a, the classroom culture that I talked about, um, where all students feel valued, they feel like they have a voice, they get to speak throughout the day. Um, trails then began in the 2020-2021 school year. We had a few teachers who volunteered to pilot trails. Um, they had to complete a training and then they were able to use some of the components in their classroom. And the goal of introducing trails was to identify an effective program to provide consistency and common language in our building. And that's one of our goals for all of our curriculum areas is we try to be consistent and use a common language with a building our size, that's really important. Um, and then we moved on this year to our full pilot and adoption process. So all elementary classrooms have used trails this school year and the, with the intent to include more staff so we could get additional input, um, all staff was provided time at the staff meeting to complete the trails training. And then this building-wide pilot allowed our staff to have meaningful dialogue. So since everyone was trying it, they could all share what their thoughts were, um, what their experiences with the kids in the classroom were. It has really allowed us to determine if we want to move forward with recommending this for adoption. Um, and we did send out a staff survey and we have those results linked here. And we'll just show them briefly now and then we can go back over those later. So some of the questions that were included, do you support the trails curriculum in the static format with no hyperlinks and no CBT use? Um, and you can see all, we had 33 responses and 100% responded, yes. And this is also available on our district website. Do you feel confident to implement the static format of trails curriculum with fidelity to your students? And of 33 responses, 93.9% .9 said yes. Let me, let me add from a building size too. We have about 35 teachers that use the program. So just to put that in perspective, we have more teachers in the building, but like special teachers, for example, they're not, they're not <coughs> trails regularly. So of the roughly 35 classroom teachers, when Ms. Plum mentioned 33 response, that's 33 out of 35 responses. Okay, do you support social emotional learning? And we had 100% of teachers say yes. Would you be willing to an, attend an informational public town hall meeting facilitated by experts from MDE that would allow a Q&A session from you and the public? And so teachers responded yes, no, or maybe. And you can see the breakdown there. And then we did have um, comments that were available that you can take a look at um, that different teachers had shared. Um, there are some that include some names that, but I, I think most of them do not identify the specific teacher. Um, for example, I'm willing to support this however needed, just let me know. Um, I see nothing wrong with the trails program. I think it's a great thing. So you can, we can read through the comments um, later. I don't want to spend a ton of, ton of time on that right now, but it is again, available on the website. Yeah, and then when you leave tonight, um, one of the first things that we learn doing meetings, like you don't hand everything out at first because everybody's eyes goes to paper. You're not really listening. So we do have them up here. So if you are taking, I know some of you take pictures right now. Um, everything we're going over, we'll give you, uh, we'll give you today. Um, these are on the website already. If you go to the elementary page and then for parents, there is a social emotional learning page. So all of these were added, I think, just last night. So when what we give you tonight or today, you won't see this specifically, this hyperlink, this, this Google Drive or Google uh, Sheet document, um, but that is available for you on the internet, on the school website. So we, we've, done, we've done a lot of talking up front, just like what is trails, what is social emotional learning? This is what we really wanted to get to. We want you to see what exactly this looks like at the elementary school. Um, what are our teachers seeing? What are our kids seeing? So the next few slides specifically show you that. This is what Ms. Keller does a lot of work on the back end. We work together to lay this out, but Ms. Keller is the one typing away and getting it all prepared, sending it to staff. So a lot of the work is done on the back end and that's what all this will be. So how have we used trails? Uh, step one is that review process. Really us three, 
the three up here, we're the ones that have a lot of the conversations on what the trails program has, what modifications it needs, what do we feel is appropriate to send out, what do we maybe, what do we want to modify or not include? We do that. And then every week, Ms. Keller sends out an email. It's one email. And then in it, it'll say like kindergarten, the second grade, here's your plan for next week, third grade through fifth grade, which is the blue right here. Here's your plan for next week. So Ms. Keller goes through after our conversations and you're going to see like lesson 12. Um, this was actually, is today the 30th? Today's the 30th. So today, if teachers are right on track, they're doing lesson 12 than the lesson 12 slides. Um, following lesson 12 on Thursday, um, they'll do some more, more activities that support whatever the lesson was today. Um, the, there's 20 lessons. Ms. Keller, I think, hit on this earlier, but I want to emphasize this. Trails is not something that's done every day in the building. There's 20 total lessons. So 20 for lower L, 20 for upper L. So if you look at this, this is one week. We're looking at 20 weeks of instruction to get through the entire program, roughly 20 weeks of instruction. Um, so the whole, the whole week today, we have our morning meetings, which Ms. Plum mentioned, but only two of those days involve or include trails. So on these days, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I know Ms. Plum talked about our morning meetings. That's when this is done. So hallway expectations, library expectations, this is the common language we have. So no matter whether we're talking to a kindergartner, a young fives kid, a fourth grader, a fifth grader, when, we, when they come in, we as a building, if my mouse will follow me here, the PBIS printables, PBIS stands for positive behavior intervention supports. If we pick like, let's go to the playground, playground's an area where, you know, there's a lot of kids out there at one time, we have different things up there. So row like Vikings, you'll see on the fence out here, it says, let's row. Uh, we have our row rewards. The day before Thanksgiving, this last, so this last um, was Tuesday was the last day of school. We celebrated some kids that had earned row tickets. We had pizza from, from Tiffany's this time. And just, it was pizza with the police. So Officer Shippacassi was with us. The kids that were drawn from every class, for the most part, it was a boy and a girl from every class. They were recognized for their positive behavior with pizza with Officer Shippacassi. And then we were there as well. But when you hear the word row, what does that mean? Um, R stands for uh, respectful. So on the playground, and it doesn't matter what grade you are, everybody knows we're going to play by the school rules. We're going to be a good sport. We're going to wait my turn. We're going to share equipment. O means ownership. So what does it mean on the playground to, to show ownership? Um, you're going to use the equipment properly. You're going to pick up your personal items. And then W makes wise, or W stands for make wise choices. So again, a lot of, a lot of um, it's repetitive in some of these ways. But play by the school rules, share equipment, wait my turn, be a good sport. So we, we mentioned like the common language early on. PBIS is a way to really have that common language for all these areas. And there's cafeteria, there's playground. I think we have bus, um, hallway, assemblies, classroom. So when we are talking to any, whether it's a five-year-old or it's, a, it's an 11-year-old, we know that everybody's hearing the same thing. So we really like how, how the, the emails that go out, they lay that out because everybody's talking about the different, the different areas at the same time. So that's what PBIS stands for. Um, the emails go out sometimes one week at a time, sometimes two weeks at a time, but we really, really try to take the planning away from the teachers. Teachers are very busy. Um, they're already planning for the ELA, the math, the science, the social studies. So we appreciate Ms. Keller taking the time to lay it out like this. So it's very streamlined for, for staff. Then for an even more in-depth look at it, we'll go to Ms. Keller. Yeah, so one of the things that I wanted to add to is um, <clears throat> we, I have it laid out this way so that teachers can focus on trails on Tuesday and Thursday, but I was just talking with a teacher yesterday and she said, oh, we already started the empathy lesson because it was pretty large. So in the lesson, will you like click one of the yeah, you might lessons? The one. Yeah, the there actual. So on the next slide, we were actually going to dig in a little bit. Oh, yeah. Do you want to dig into that one or yeah. the empathy one? Whatever. So matter. this is a lesson. If I go back to what I clicked on. This is from the week of November 15th. So we're gonna look in depth at the week of November 15th and what, what the kid is, what the kids sure. and teachers would have done. So first one is the K2 uh, span. Yeah, so if we look at the actual lesson here um, and we scroll down, <clears throat> you can see that there's an option for how to break it down. Let me put the... Yeah, so where it says like day one, day two. So it shows you how you can break it down into a five-day span if you would like. So it gives the teachers that flexibility based on, you know, how long the kids can sit and listen and understand and, um, or if it's a 
bigger lesson or a shorter one. Um, yeah, and actually, can we go back again? <laughs> um, another thing just about like the common language, um, that's very helpful to have even just like with expectations, but identifying their feelings. This is a document um, that they see a lot. This is um, Winston and Cleo. They are some characters that the kids talk about. <laughs> um, and so I have kids come into my office and I was just telling them that I feel like this program has given kids the words to say, I feel a big sad. And so they come to me and there's another document too, where it's a feelings thermometer. And so we sometimes will color that in like, okay, you, you have a, you're feeling a big sad. So we'll color in like how intense their feeling is. And then we practice the different coping skills that they're learning in the lessons to bring that down. But I, I was saying too, I feel like there's a lot of kids now that before they didn't necessarily have the words to, to say how they feel or how intense their feeling is. But through these lessons, I'm not having to sit on the floor in the hallway with kids as much to try to figure out what those big feelings are, but they're able to just tell me. And then we're working on the next step with how do we lower this intense feeling or how do we solve this problem? Um, I went off on a tangent. That wasn't necessarily the whole lesson, but... Um, <laughs> Well, there's a second character specifically that I think of, and he is maybe having a rough day. He's like, I'm a big sad today. And it was just yeah. neat because last year, um, awesome kid, but he wouldn't have had the common language because he's not just hearing it over and over and over again. Like, how can you put yeah. words behind that? Yeah, but this, um, I have it all linked for the teachers. Um, so it's all in one spot, which they really appreciate. Um, there's slides. Um, and it just breaks down the lesson. It has, sometimes it has videos linked um, for like different stories. Um, yeah, that's the minimal prep work for the teachers. And that's why I think they appreciate it because it's all right there. Um, but they have all the information ahead of time. So they review it as well. You know, we're reviewing it. They are before it's being implemented um, with the students. And I think one thing while we're, while we're in here, um, yep, I wanna emphasize something else that we're doing. Um, when we go back to the lesson plan itself, like, you know, we all use the internet enough now. We know when something's blue like that, there's a hyperlink. So when you hear us say like, it's a static program, I wanna make sure we understand what that means. Um, originally, when the lesson plans came out, all of these blue, these blue things were links that would go to external sources or external resources. Uh, Miss Keller took a good chunk of, I think it was our first records day. So the end of that first marking period, went through and converted that. So none of these are links anymore. All of these, you can click on it all you want. It's not going anywhere. Um, the URLs, they're no, they're, no longer, they're no longer are connected. We wanted, uh, we heard, right? We, we live in the community. Um, I've been in the community a long time, about 37 years. I understand what the concerns are. So one thing we wanted to do is to be in complete control of the program and what was being sent to our teachers and to our kids. So, you know, when other, when other programs or other resources have access to things that can change. Um, they can make a change and we might not even know it, but it might automatically just be there because they made it, they updated it, the document's updated. That's not possible the way that we're using this. Um, the static curriculum, we went through and I think, um, where do I have everything at? DES, here's how we do it. DES office, we might get a little informal here, but I just wanna make sure you're comfortable in understanding what that looks like. Here's my DES office team drive. So in there, we have a, a shared folder called DES curriculum or trails SEL curriculum. And then within that, like we've talked about, there's the lower grade span K2 and there's the upper grade span three, five. So let's say it doesn't matter. Let's go to K2 this time. And if we go into K2, we said there's 20 lessons. There's a folder for every lesson. And we're the only one so far. Our office staff is the only one that has all of this. Um, we're through what, where are we right now with what was been sent to teachers? Was it the empathy one? I think you just mentioned. Yep, so we're through 12, so there's eight to go. So in the empathy lesson, the, here's all the things that, that Ms. Keller linked and sent out. But in that lesson plan that we're sending out again, there's no hyperlinks there. We just wanted to make sure we were in complete control. There was nothing that could, could change or could be added at a later date. Um, we go through these lessons. I don't think empathy is one of them where we needed to, but if I scroll, um, well, if, if we don't feel that the lesson fits the um the values of our building of our community we make those modifications we, we don't include them um I, I don't believe this is one that we had to we made any modifications to but um i know the other one that was linked back here i feel like 
if I go back to the three, five lesson, identifying my supports, um, there was something in the identifying my supports lesson, for example, that we didn't think it really fit the beliefs and the mindset and the viewpoints of our school, our community and us as individuals. So we, we modified it. Um, the lesson itself was good, but if there's pieces of it that we don't feel fit, that's where on the back end, we proactively eliminate that before it goes out to teachers. So the specific thing I'm talking about was right here. There was a component to this lesson plan. We didn't really think it was appropriate. So it was eliminated. So this is not what Trail sent us necessarily. It's what we took. We modified for our, our reality, our, our Dundee's kids and families. And then we send it out from there. So if you, I know Ms. Winnell, our assistant superintendent, she said some families coming in and previewing materials. Um, I, there might be more to come. I'm not 100% sure. But when, she doesn't have like all of this. So when you preview it in advance, or if you have access to trails through another means, you wouldn't necessarily see how we are, we'll call it Dundeeizing it. You wouldn't see how we're Dundeeizing it or how we're making it fit for our community. You would see whatever trails gave to, gave to us. And then we take it from there and make sure that we're doing what we think is appropriate for, for the community, for our school. Um, we're not, I mean, we understand the world that we're living in, right? It's, it's turned on the news any day, the CNN or Fox News, turn on whatever you want. It's a hard, there's a, there's a lot of challenges right now. Our job is not, we don't view our job as to pushing one side or pushing the other side. We try to best support kids. So that's why the whole control and the static document, we really felt strongly on that and had to find a way to eliminate those hyperlinks so we could control the message. Um, what, what our opinion would be, and we haven't got this far yet because it's only the first year for this, how we see this playing out is like next year, we reevaluate, Trails is put, uh, I don't want to say put out by, but put out by U of M, right? Um, U of M overall sees, sees this program. Whatever changes they make, then we would like to revisit as a, as a elementary team with our teachers and make sure that we're making whatever changes. Like, let's say they added something in, if we wanna incorporate what they added on in the future, then let's have that conversation then. And then at that point, uh, this is the first time we've done it. So I would assume it would go back to the board of education for approval so that whatever revisions we wanna make. So currently what our elementary team wants to do is get this originally board approved so we can get out of this pilot stage. It's officially a program that we're using. Uh, but we're, we're only looking for the static program to be approved, not the necessarily the, the trails program as a whole. If you go to trails, the website, there's like, there's things that you can get to, there's things that you can't get to. This is all that we want to prove, what we have in front of us to help guide our, our instruction. Anything to add to that? Yeah, I just wanted to, if you go back to like, so that since there were so many things that were hyperlinked in those original lessons, sometimes there were like links to these documents, like the feelings thermometer. So I, in my email, link that document so the teachers still have access to it. Um, and sometimes there are videos um, or other things that are helpful for kids. So I made my own document that has those available for the teachers to still implement those um, if they choose. Any, while we're in this folder, um, is there anything that you specifically, and we're going to have Q&A and we're actually going to get there really quick, but while we're in here, is there any questions that you have that you'd like to discuss about what this whole, about how we, how we house it or how we control it and make sure that the message is going from, from trails to us, to our staff, to our kids? Questions on the flow? Yes, sir. Yep, so right now that's controlled by, and that's one of the Q&As, that's a great question. Um, right now it's us three are the ones that are looking at it in advance and, and making sure we're, we're looking and seeing that it fits the values of the community and the school. Right now it's just our elementary team. So there wasn't a, it wasn't a big thing to determine. Um, a lot of times, um, I mean, as our social worker and the elementary principal and assistant principal, and we're talking about the different components of different programs, whether it's academic, such as math or ELA, or whether it's social emotional like trails, um, we have a lot, of the, a lot of the conversations with this as our team. Correct. And then from here, it goes to the teachers. And I want to make sure we have, we have monthly PBIS meetings, which at those PBIS meetings, we have frequent, frequent conversations with staff saying like, how is it going? How is it not going? What are you seeing that works? What do you think needs modified? Have you saw anything that we didn't see that you feel wasn't, a, wasn't appropriate to include? And, and so far, there hasn't been anything that's went 
from us to kids that was not a conversation with staff. Uh, but having that and revisiting it with the, the 40 staff members, um, the 35-ish classroom teachers, that's something we do regularly. Yeah. And, and it's an open door on our office. I mean, it's very, teachers, I, I like to think teachers feel comfortable with us. We feel comfortable going and talking to them. So if they do have any questions or concerns or anything they want to talk about, they, they do come in. They stop in at their prep time, their lunch time, and we have those conversations. Yeah. Good question. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, there, there's def there has not been a lot that we've pulled out of the programs. There's been a few things here and a few things there. Um, one of, um, I'm going to even leave trails for a minute for a story from last, it was about last spring, um, last fall. I mean, I got a call from a, a dad. We use Scholastic News as a resource. Uh, and a lot of you, I'm, I'm assuming, have probably heard of Scholastic News. Kids use it from young fives all the way through fifth grade. This was shortly after the time of the, the Minneapolis, an incident in Minneapolis between a police officer and a, a person in Minneapolis. The Scholastic News put a article out that we didn't, this was before it was really on the forefront. We weren't really looking at it. I wasn't looking for it. I wasn't really prepared for it, to be honest with you. Um, once I got that call, this awesome dad, um, state police officer in our community, he's like, hey, what is, what is this? Why, why are, is this something the school is promoting? That's where our flags went up on our end thinking, oh shoot, this is our reality. The world is changing. We, we can't just use resources without really digging into them in advance. So at that point, if it was something where um, there's like, there's, it's controversial, really controversy is what we're looking to avoid. We're not here to be controversial. We're here to just help kids. Um, so in that specific conversation, it took us back to our fifth grade teachers. It was a fifth grade Scholastic News article. And we had the conversation like, hey, before any Scholastic News comes out, we need to preview it more now than we've ever had to because there's so many pieces in, in the world right now that, that are controversial. And that's not what we're looking for. Um, so in here, it's the same thing. If we, look for, if we look for different things that are controversial where there's two severely different sides on it or there's a lot to be left for interpretation, we're not touching that. Um, we talk in our staff meetings, like the line, I feel like a long time ago, the line was maybe a little bit bigger. Schools could stay on this line, but this line has gotten really narrow the last couple of years, especially where we have, we have the right side of the line, we have the left side of the line and not aligning the right and the left to meaning anything. But that line, what you have to stay on, it's very narrow. We, we work hard as a district to stay on that line. We're not looking to push anything out that's not appropriate, that's taking one side out of the, or the other. That's what, that's what I would say we're looking for when deciding what content to push to the teachers, to push to the kids, and what content, you know what, we're not gonna touch it. That's not our role, that's not our job. Does that answer your question? Yeah, not, that wasn't necessarily with trails. It was with Scholastic News. Um, but yeah, I would say my, so myself, I was on a lot higher alert from that conversation on. We always tried to pay attention. But when, when I can look and be like, oh, he is, he's right. I mean, he was right. It's not, it wasn't our job to, to, to push out the article. It was a factual article. But sometimes how you can interpret the facts, it's not as easy. It's not as clear cut as that. Um, so that's where I, my flags went up, like we've got to step up, I've got to step up and have more conversations to avoid situations like that. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, you're welcome. I think I might have saw a hand on the side. Yes, ma'am. Yep. I don't know 100% how he, well, normally we send the Scholastic News home. I'm not sure if it's a situation where he got the article or if it was a conversation with his kiddo, but he wanted to call and get some facts. And that's what led to the conversation with me. Yep. Yeah, yes ma'am. Yep, definitely. So it, that 
is more of a district level because if, if, if I were to answer now for the elementary, that also affects like how the middle school does things, how high school does things, how Riverside does things. So it's a district level conversation that I'd love to have. We actually had it like earlier today um, and just playing that out, what that will look like. But that would be something that we would have to take to Mr. Ms. Winnell, Mr. Manuzak, and see if it would be a district expectation to bring parents in for, for planning or looking at resources like that, definitely. Um, I will say, since that was kind of my eye-opening moment, um, if I date back to that Scholastic News article, since then, I mean, how I've personally done things have changed too. Um, we, we've all reflected a lot, especially the last couple of years. Um, that was my reflection moment where, where we had to start having a lot more conversations with with staff. And I can't tell you how many times we've talked with staff now. Um, not that they're doing, our, our teachers are amazing. Our teachers are what makes the build, makes the buildings as strong as, as strong as it is, the community and then the teachers. Um, but we, we had conversations since then that we didn't have previously, such as, hey, what are we looking at? How are we gonna make sure that we're not, we're not taking, we're not moving too far this way or too far this way. We wanna stay here. We wanna support kids the best that we can. We're not looking to get in the middle of uh, whatever the mindset or the values of the home are. If, if we see that, well, that's where we're going to step back and we're not going to include that. So there's been school that's news articles, for example, that we've, we haven't used um, since that, that I wouldn't have addressed year, years ago. Uh, but because of the reality of today, now we do. Um, is that Okay. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there are students of color here, and their mental health needs to be addressed as well. And I've heard a lot of things about some of the students of color that we have in these buildings experiencing it. Is that still being addressed? Yep. So, oh. this is only one person, right? Right. So, um, do we there? I feel like I'm doing all the talking. These. <laughs> okay, move me, just kick me out of the side. Um, yeah, it, what, when we look at these 20 modules that, that are included here, um, in instruction, we have tier one support, tier two support, tier three support. If you're not in education, it really doesn't mean anything to you because I can't go to your job and speak to the specifics because I only know the education side. Tier one supports are like universal. It's the instruction that all kids are getting, whether we're talking about math, ELA, social emotional learning, science, social studies. Tier one goes to everybody. Tier two supports go to kids well, they, maybe they need a little extra support. Um, academically, we have our win time. If you have kids in the building, you probably have heard of our win time. Win time stands for what I need. That's where we're taking, let's say we're talking about math instruction. If, the, if they need, if those kids need more support after the tier one instruction, that's where that tier two instruction comes from. If tier two is not enough, then we move into tier three instruction, which at this point, instead of having like a, you have whole group in tier one, then maybe you have a 10 to one-ish ratio in tier two of students to teacher. And then in tier three, you're, you're working in a very small group, like one-on-one, one-on-two, two-on-three, or one-on-three, on two, two on three, or one on three, I'm sorry. Um, so the, the, the farther in, down the tier order you go to, the smaller the groups go. So the, the groups that we're working on, whatever the subject, math, social, emotional learning, we don't care. Whatever the groups are, they're getting more intensive because there's less kids and there's more one-on-one -on -one time for kids, um, for the staff to give to the kids. So this, these 20 modules, if I slide back here, these, this is all tier one instruction. So what we look at, these are all core values. I've had, I've had, I have one kiddo still in the building, two kiddos, I don't know where the time goes, but they're gone to the middle school now. Um, these are all tier one instructions that all, all kids are getting. So if, there, if there's supports that any kids need in addition to that, that's not, we don't do that with trails. Trails is just the overall, the general conversation that we're having with kids. How are you gonna be a good decision maker? How are you gonna know like who, who are your role models or who are your systems of support? You need to know you can come to me, you can come to Ms. Keller, Ms. Plum, your classroom teacher, Officer Shippa Cassie, um, Mr. Manuzak, uh, in, any adult in the building. So these conversations here, these go to, to go to everybody. If there's needs beyond that, let's say we're having issues where a student is not making wise choices and how they're talking to another student for whatever reason, that's addressed not through the trails program, that's addressed through coming down and having conversations, I mean, one-on-one, -on -one. what did you do? I mean, how should that have looked? Did you make a mistake? Did you not make a mistake? How do we help make this right? Should you apologize? Should you not apologize? Should you write an apology? Should you not write an apology? If you're, you're in the cafeteria and you're chucking food, a couple of years ago at some levels, those kids would find themselves in detention or suspension. Like, we don't do that, not at the elementary level especially. So at this point, like if you're throwing food, if we've got little Charlie over here chucking, chucking a hamburger in the cafeteria, 
Well, now you, guess what, Charlie? Tomorrow you're gonna go clean the cafeteria. So from a restorative justice standpoint, making sure that we're helping and addressing issues that way um, versus screaming at the kids or, or making it a whole group lesson, that's, that's not what Trails is all about. Does that answer your question? Sometimes I just start talking and then I, I hope that I bore you enough that you forget the question. That's a, I mean, that's a good question. A lot of times um, diversity means so much more. There's so much more than just racial diversity when you're talking about diversity. So if, if there's different, what we're looking for in the trails lesson, diversity is not a, not a thing to be ignored or not. To, we are teaching the diversity, but if there's different pieces to it that may use, I don't want to say controversial, but maybe harder topics, that's what we, we, we avoid those harder topics in that whole group instruction. Um, but we still teach the concept of, in this case, diversity. So our diversity lesson, which is that next week, is that which? Okay. So lesson 13. Yep, that makes sense because I think we're on 11 or 12 now. Um, if, we're, if we're doing that, we're still talking about diversity. But I know for sure, like right here, lesson overview, I see one, two, three, five. Um, I know I'm very proud of our math instruction at Dundee. And you, we know there's a four in there, right? Somewhere there's a four missing. Um, we didn't think we're still going to teach the, the diversity lesson, but there's pieces of it that we're going to maybe take out of the instruction or modify the instruction to not include, but not take away from the concept at large. So the, we're not ignoring diversity or equality or, or equity, but as we're teaching it, we want to make sure that we're doing it appropriately. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Every year our, our, and you're talking racial diversity. Oh, yep. We, we are a more diverse district year after year. Absolutely. Um, but I mean, this is just an example of it. We're not just saying, nope, diversity is a bad word. We're not going to talk about it. We're going to address it. But when we're addressing it, we want to address it appropriately. And also in a way that we control the message, we control what's going out and it's not reliant on uh, an outside organization. And I don't mean to talk negatively about U of M. I was so proud of U of M on Saturday for that beat down they put on the Buckeyes. <laughs> but so I don't mean to be negative about them, but in any, any program, we just don't want somebody else to control the message that we're giving to kids. We want to be in control of what's going out. And it's not a control thing, but it's a safety. Yes, sir. And as far as diversity goes, are you teaching elementary kids diversity in an appropriate way as far as like the, the racial part of it or the sexual part of it for elementary kids? Yeah. Uh, that stuff isn't being taught to the kids in the, at the elementary level, is it? No, absolutely not. Um, so when you go through here, well, let's look through it a little bit. Um, I mean, relationships, being different is beautiful. Really, it's celebrating the differences. When you're talking about that, there's so much, a lot of times, especially in the climate that we have right now, when we talk about differences, a lot of times our minds go right to race, but there's so much more to differences. Um, whether a kid has glasses or not is an easy one, right? Sir, you have glasses, I do not. That makes us different. We're similar in a ton of ways, but we're also different. Um, and, and there's nothing wrong, whether nothing wrong with me because I don't have glasses, there's nothing wrong with you because you have glasses. But, but like that, we're not, no, we're not talking about, I'm not sure if you're specifically talking pronouns or if you're talking about like gender identity.
fight for me to have that to teach the kids those kind of things. Yeah. That realm is normal. So that's in my opinion. That's why we have all this upheaval in the world today. Yep. Because people are saying right is wrong and wrong is right. Mm -hmm. We're not going to straighten any of this out until we realize that. Right. I would say, and I'll look to Ms. Keller and Ms. Plum, we haven't had to remove anything like that. But I can tell you that if it did creep into the lessons through a revision, like next year when we looked at it again to see how we wanted to make modifications, that's something that I personally would flag is it's a family's responsibility to have that conversation. It's not our responsibility. That'd be something that we would modify and what we're pushing out and, and as another way to just control that message. Um, we're, not, we're not looking to take, that's, that's, that's a hard one, right? That's a challenging. It's a challenge now that I didn't have when I, not at least as, as freely or as commonly now is 25 years ago. Um, there's a lot more going on right now, right? In this world, we would then, we would classify that probably as something that's maybe a little more controversial. We'd step back, um, not let it make us not teach diversity or one of those other modules, but we wouldn't include it in the instruction. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I, I think, and that's one of the reasons in the past, we haven't had a lot of families coming in during a pilot period because things change. That's when we're trying to figure out what's working, what's not working, what modifications do we need? So this eventually is where, as we're wrapping it up, we'll get to Miss Winnell so she can update whatever she has that she's showing families, which I'm assuming she's probably showing whatever the original, whatever the original 20 lessons were. Um, that's not what we're looking for because after we've looked into it, we've made those modifications. This will go to Ms. Winnell. I think one thing we talked about doing, and it's a lot of work on RM, but we want to make sure we're doing right by families and right by kids, but we'll be having um, a, a conversation. We can't just turn everything over. There's issues with turning everything over, not just because Dundee doesn't want to, but to just freely release something that in this case, University of Michigan has copyright of. We, I don't think it's legal to actually even do that. Um, but one thing we're talking about doing is making, putting it out there, whether it's like a screencastify, it's a video, or whether it's just a, a, a Zoom meeting that you're invited to and we record. But through those 20 lessons, um, a meeting where we're showing you this, showing you what, whatever it is that you want to see so you can see what we're pushing out to families. Um, we realize how sensitive a of a topic it is, but we don't want, sometimes doing the easy thing is not doing the right thing, right? It'd be easy just to wash our hands and walk away and say, nope, we're done with it all. But when you look at it and you look at the way that we're trying to help kids, it's the, hard, it's the hardest thing to kind of push through and keep trying to move forward here. So sometimes that takes more time. So we're thinking like every other Friday, for example, I'm organizing a Zoom with whoever wants to join me, maybe two o'clock in the afternoon would it'll be recorded just to finish it out. So here's what, here's what this lesson next week's gonna look like. The next Friday, here's what this lesson's gonna look like. We're talking 10 minutes. It's not gonna be a very long thing. And then at that point you can decide if you're the parent of a student in Dundee Elementary School, well, yeah, we, I'm good with my kiddo participating, or eh, maybe, maybe this doesn't really align to my family's values. I'm going to opt out. You're more than welcome to opt out of Trails Lessons. Um, that 100% that you're right as a parent. Um, but th that's what we're looking at because we want you to make decisions based on the facts. There's a lot of misinformation out there. We don't, we don't want to, we want to squash that. And that's why I was excited for tonight. We were excited for tonight. Yeah, no, I, I understand it. Yeah, it, it's been it's been like that. This is more of a controversial topic because of what we're talking about. But if you look back, um, well, I'll go a few years ago. We piloted three different math programs during that pilot phase. Whatever the subject is, we're looking constantly at different programs. ELA most recently, we have National Geographic Reach for Reading is our is our ELA program. We were also looking what was the what Holton Mifflin? What was that called? Yeah, the Journeys program, we were looking at that program. A lot of times you're trying to find the best way forward. We do a lot of looking at different programs and seeing what's going to work. And then it goes to everybody um, for that. I understand, I understand what you're saying. We are, we're 11 or 12 lessons in. Um, be happy to walk through all 12 of those lessons right now if you want to see what went out to kids. Uh, but at this point, there's not much more I can do to that. But that's why we're trying to offer opportunities like that Zoom moving forward. So lesson 14, we're not making you feel the same way. We are trying to be proactive, communicate, be transparent with it, 
to make sure you know what, what we're using in the building. Yes, sir. Yeah, I, and I don't, I honestly, I disagree that we're trying to get inside of their feelings. I would say we're trying to help equip them with words to, to express how they're feeling. Mm -hmm. Right, which is more like, honestly, at forever. I remember sitting in this room, I graduated from Dundee in 2002. If we have any Dundee grads, you've heard of the best rules back in the day. It was on that wall, it said best rules. Mr. Rocker sat right here. He was my elementary principal. And we went through what does be kind, what does be mean? I think it was be kind, be respectful. Um, S, gosh, we haven't done Dundee I spent a couple of years now. It's 38 now, I forget. But at, at that time, we would we would talk about what does it mean to be respectful? If you weren't respectful, how did how what were you thinking? Why did you act like you act? This isn't anything, in my opinion, for being in the district as long as I have now, this isn't anything new. We've always had these conversations. What's new is the the consistency and the structure that trails provide so it's common from young fives which really young fives doesn't use it as much through fifth grade yeah i and, and that's your, that's I, I disagree but i respectfully disagree um when i first started teaching upper elementary we had care a character traits program where uh as a fifth grade teacher we would go through the character traits of be respectful um be responsible and we discussed exactly what that means um that was the, probably 2007, 2008, we were doing that then. That was called character education. Um, now, instead of using character education, which I'm not even sure if it exists anymore, that's what the TRAILS program does. But there's a lot of commonalities between character ed, uh, the best rules back in 1998, um, the TRAILS program in the conversations. We're just looking for the consistency. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Absolutely. No, not personal, having a conversation. Yeah. I think my answer would be the same as if we're doing an open-ended um, an open-ended math story problem on multiplication. What's stopping a teacher from making a multiplication question and giving it to a kiddo that that they want to go off and, and word this way? Um, I mean, I feel like we we really, I think as us, we trust our teachers. We have a lot of conversations on that, but things can go sideways in a hurry if that's the if there's ill intent behind it. But that's not just in social emotional learning, that's in any subject area that you have. Um, if, if we're going to read a book to our kiddo, how sideways would it go if we picked a book that did not align to the values of the building and to the community? Um, so I, I value and I understand what you're saying, but I don't want to specifically say that's only possible for that to happen in social emotional learning. That's possible with everything. But that's where the trust comes in. Uh, we. Hmm. Yeah. No, and and we've been we've been watching along the way. I understand what's happened. Uh, we were we were looking forward to tonight. I 
it's been like, honestly, yesterday was like Christmas Eve. I was fired up for it tonight because to, to have an opportunity to talk to people and let them see exactly what we're seeing, that's what we want to. We, we, um, I live here, my kids go here. We, we've all, we're all tied to this community. We're, we're in it together, we truly are. So to have an opportunity to speak to it now, I, I, I am glad we have that tonight. Um, but social emotional learning, other subject areas, um, we have a lot of trust and respect for the teachers that we bring in at Dundee Elementary School. They're, in, they're incredible. Um, we had our five rock stars again this last summer. Um, some schools are having a hard time finding teachers and we hired five that we just, we think the world of. Um, but when we go through that interview process, there's a, a lot of it's more of even than experience. It's about reading and talking to teachers and understanding like where they come from, you know, to be good, rep, good representatives for our building. And, and we have a lot of them, all of them that, that they are. We're, I mean, we're blessed for that for sure. But does that, it doesn't answer your question, but I hope, does it put it in perspective at all? Does it somewhat help? Okay. Um, yes, ma'am. Yeah, it's okay. So on the trails website, there's there's kind of two umbrellas of trails. And part of it is the social emotional learning and part of it is CBT and mindfulness. And that section is for older grades. And that is not what we are piloting. That's 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 what, that's what that was implying, not CBT. There is a lesson that focuses on just on CBT, but it's that question was meaning not the other umbrella of trails. Does that make sense? So Natalie, what is this? This this is the CBT folder. Oh, sorry. It stands for it, cognitive behavioral therapy. So it's connecting how a situation, your thoughts, feelings, and actions are connected. So you're at an ice cream place. You're thinking, oh, I, I, I want to eat ice cream. You're feeling happy about it. What are you going to do? You're going to eat ice cream. So it's talking through those situations with kids in positive situations or, you know, a negative situation on the playground. Um, just how to talk through how all of those things are connected, how, you know, a situation happens where you're disagreeing, um, you know, you wanted to play something different than your best friend. So you're thinking, oh, maybe they don't want to be my friend anymore. So you're feeling sad about it. And maybe you then cry, right? Well, that's not necessarily true. Think about it. They're my friend. They care about me. If you change your thought and think, you know, I'm going to, I think that I'm going to let them have a turn to choose what we do today. Then you feel great because you're playing with your friend. And what do you do? You have a good time at, at recess. So it's just kind of walking through those situations. That's what this lesson is about. But as far as that question on the survey, that was referring to um, the other umbrella of trails that is not for our program, what we're doing. Does that make sense? The, the other portion of trails, the mindfulness and CBT, which is like small groups. It's more like tier, it's tier two intervention is what that is. So remember tier, tier one, we're talking hundred percent of the kids. Tier two, we're talking like 20% of the kids that need extra support. Tier three, we're talking about the 10% the that need even additional support. So mm -hmm. CBT relies more on that bottom 20% that might need the extra support. Yeah. And we're only tier one instruction with trails. We're only talking about the whole and the modules that we've discussed today. So, and I think when she mentioned the folder that's in every one, I believe this is what a lot of the folders, a lot of the modules back here, they include this. And what I'm looking at is um, I went into uh, what I, I don't even know what this one is, um, the lesson 13, the diversity, but there's a CBT file in that. And that is just this image. And it's this image over and over again in the different lessons, because it connects to what Ms. Keller is saying about how these four things are connected, how one thing leads to the next. Oh, it is no, no, they're two different, two completely different umbrellas. Um, the, the concept here is how are these four things combined? If you look at the CBT, which I believe, is that free on the trails website? I believe you can get to it and get a, no. Hi, um, I'm Marcella, but I'm the mental health coordinator for the ISD, um, and my son also goes there, so that's why I'm here. Um, but to help kind of any confusion, so trails has two separate programs. There is mindfulness group. That is a tier two group. That is the free information on the trail website. So when you go in and you can click and you see like assessment and you see all these other things, that is tier two. Currently that is only implemented in the high schools in the North County. Some of them, not all of them. 
And that is a tier two group where you receive parent consent to have your child in that group to learn further about depression, anxiety, and its skills management. That's tier two. So when they have that question on there of um, not using any of that CBT material, that's what they are referencing. I'm using the freest material that you can access through the drill system. The CBT, which also can stand for theory, so therapy and theory, um, it is the theory of how all of these interconnect. And so they are not, this tier one, and even in tier two, they are not doing therapy with the kids. They're teaching them that connection. Um, and that's what that one CBT lesson is about. It's all about thoughts and things and behaviors and distinguishing the difference between the thoughts and the um, I hope that helps you there. It does. I see you sitting on your hands, Margo. And you're like, <laughs> I just want to go. And she finally, her husband couldn't hold her back anymore. And you're good. <laughs> But no, we're, I mean, we're glad that you're here. That's a great, great description. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yeah, I, I, from my perspective as the elementary principal, I'm not talking from the district. I feel like a lot of it is because we wanted to get this done so that what you were seeing as the community was exactly what we're using. Um, you saw something, if you came in, sir, I'm not 100% sure. If you met and you looked through the program, you saw something maybe similar to what we're doing, but not that final product. A lot of times, and again, with math, if you think of the Miss Plum used this analogy earlier, everyday math, our math program, awesome program. And I know that it's not math. You, may, you, you pointed that out, but I want to hear me out here. When you go to everyday math, the lesson on dividing decimals, there are a ton of resources. If a teacher were to teach everyday math and use every extension and every activity, you're looking at like four days for every lesson. We're going to get through 20% of the program or we're well less under what we should be getting done. Um, here, that's what we did. We did that with everyday math back in 2005. Like we're going to do mental math. We're going to do math message. We're going to do the math boxes. We're going to do the, the core content. We narrow it out through that process, what exactly the instruction is going to look like and what was going to be included. Even though this is not academic per se, it's more SEL, social emotional learning. We took this opportunity to lay out what do we want to hit on? What do we not want to hit on and get to that point for everyday math. Now, here we are, we're 15 years later. It's a pretty well-oiled machine, but we've had the time to put into it. It's the same thing that we were doing for the last, last year when we piloted it, there were only a few people involved. It was just to see like, hey, is this even worth our time? Is this something that we want to engage with and continue with? Once those representatives said, you know what, we, we like this. We like what it's doing with the kids. Then we wanted more eyes on it. And that's the reason that it looked like that this year. The only reason, and I'll use your words, that I think families were blocked because we weren't sure it wasn't set yet what it was going to look like from from the top down. Well, I mean, I, I, like I said, I, I use your words, but I understand what you're saying. Yeah, I, yeah the, the, I think the district's intent was to let the, let the teachers and those that were like analyzing the program and checking into it do that part and, and then get out that final product. I think there was no ill intent behind it, in my opinion, whatsoever. It was just giving us an opportunity to get the program to look exactly how we wanted it. You want to look at it right now? Yeah. yeah. Survey. I'm like, what? 
So I had to sign to opt out. How many kids just went ahead and did it and their parents had no idea mm -hmm. it was happening? <laughs> That's the issue, that things are happening in the classroom without the parents' knowledge. Is that not even a letter's coming home? Hey, we're going to do this. You opt in or opt out. Mm -hmm. And then out of these lessons that are being done, those that are opting out are getting set in the hallway to read a book. So... Yeah, I, I I feel like a lot of what we're saying is more like wide scale change that we're looking for. Um, it's coming down specifically to trails because this is what's triggered that what the the need or the want to have that bigger change on the, how the processes are put in place. I mean, I, I I agree with following through with whatever you want to make it look right in the future. Our goal is the elementary team is to make sure that we're answering the questions on now and making sure we can we can step in and maybe 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 it's on me. Maybe I should have did this back at step one. I didn't even realize it then. Um, but like what I'm talking about next Friday, talking about next week's lesson, we'll show you in advance. We're not trying as an elementary team. We're not trying to hide anything from you. Um, I wish I'd had that thought a long time ago. I apologize that I didn't, but I think when we're looking at how programs are introduced or used or implemented or approved in the district, um, continue, continue the fight. I mean, that's the right of the community, right? Continue the fight to make it look how you want it to look, but understand, I don't want that. Um, the dissatisfaction of what the processes look like to take away from what what it is now that you see it. Um, if 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 we had something up here right now, and, and tell me where you want to go with it, and we'll go look and see what's there. Um, because I, I'm nothing. I'm nothing but just proud of what's up here. There's nothing that we're trying to hide. Um, we don't want to lose an opportunity to get um, what we're viewing as quality lessons in front of kids to help support them because we don't support the process and what that's looked like. I wanna make sure we're differentiating the process versus what, what we're doing here. I think a lot, of the, a lot of the frustration comes down to that process, which spills over to frustration on trips. Yes, sir. Yes. Um, I, as the assistant principal, I do see a lot of students in the office for different discipline, for different issues. And it, it is necessary to have that common language, that mechanism to talk with students about it. it we're not just saying, oh, you misbehave, now you get a detention. Yeah, the, school, the, the school officials aren't um, counselors. They're not. No, we're not. But we do have tons of situations that yeah. come in kids disagreeing or a fight on the bus or a fight on the playground. And it's not just kids being aggressive, it's kids having problems. And how can we solve this problem at school? We're not trying to counsel them. We're trying to help them fix the problem so that we can meet our goal of teaching students and helping them learn and meeting their needs. Um, should be involved in that. Um, and they are, that they are, they are. We definitely make phone calls. Right, but we have to we have to work with what we have here, the students that we have here, and we have to help them solve the problems here. We involve parents in that process, but little spats on the playground, little disagreements at lunch, somebody bumped my elbow and they didn't say sorry. We're not going to call a parent for every single time something like that happens. That that's not reasonable. Yeah, I mean that sounds like something we can maybe talk about after. I mean, right. honestly, I mean, we can, we can talk. Um, okay. Well, be more than happy to talk to you after this. I'm not hundred percent sure what we're even talking about, but I would engage with the conversation. Be happy to engage in the conversation with you. Um, yeah. Okay. I mean, uh, let's talk more after I, 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 I apologize, but I think, further conversation is definitely necessary. And, and I, I just want to add one thing to what Ms. Plum said. You're right, it would be easy to walk away. Is it worth it? Well, the easy thing is not always the right way. Um, so we could walk away and say it's not worth it, but because we see the value in what we're doing here and what we're trying to do 
um, in the building. That's what allows us to have the motivation to keep keep moving forward, keep making those changes to to do so. Yeah, absolutely. And that, that's where we, we, we find that we find that line because you're right. There's things that the school is, should be responsible for. There's things as parents that we should be responsible for. We're not trying to take and do that job for you. Not, not at all. That's not the, not the intent, not what we're doing. And that's what that preview and that proactive review of the lessons allows us to do. Agree. Yes, ma'am. what it would look like in the school. And I appreciate you I mean, sharing all that. Um, here, we are not, um, there's different resources that we have. If, if there's a situation where a kiddo needs additional support, we're looking at this tier one support as from our teachers. Our teachers are trained teachers, but that doesn't mean that they have, the, they don't have the ability to sit down and, and, and provide um, counseling, in-depth in counseling to a kiddo, right? We can talk to them. We can talk about their feelings, talk about how to move forward. But that's where we rely on. So Margo and the mental health team at the ISD, who they have more training, that is what they do. And we would never just blindly say, hey, this kid needs Margo and the mental health team. That, that starts at the home. We start with conversations with the family before it even gets that far, or a family medical center. Um, that's another organization. If we're looking for something more intense and more in depth than what, for a, for a kiddo, what they need, um, that's, all, all these programs, they require support and, and calls home before we go anywhere with it. I agree. It's the it's those tier one that overall it's a big umbrella, but it's recognizing those situations for a teacher, but not taking those and providing it, uh, seeing and recognizing is different than seeing and trying to diagnose. We're not diagnosing anybody. Um, we're not we're not providing surveys to kids, any of that. We're trying to support kids. So if we can give the teachers the knowledge to help support, that's what we're looking for. Um, and then there's a few hands. So I'm trying to think of who is first. So, yes, ma'am. Yes, Ms. Bench. Once the, you know, once the kid gets through, to ensure that that process still happens, would that be 
Yeah. Yeah, I think it comes down to the, the expectations that we have. Um, if we do go anywhere, um, this is what is in our, and we have a large staff, right? Everybody understands right now what this process looks like because we've been seeing it. Um, if, if we were to all three of us be gone tomorrow, um, I think our building understands because we talk about it so much. This is what we're approving in the static format. The only way that could make a change to the static format would be taking this back to the board for a reapproval because we want them to be aware. It's important that our board be aware of what's going on. And that's why I, I appreciate looking around and seeing board members here tonight because it's the first chance that, I mean, personally, we've had to talk not to the board, but talk in a format where the board can see exactly what it looks like. Um, but any changes to it once approved needs to go needs to go through the Board of Education. And, and that's the expectation. I mean, from Mr. Manuzak, Ms. Winnell, us teachers, we all are on the same page with that. Yeah, good question. Yes, ma'am. And then, yes. So last year, it was a lot different. I, no teacher went through all 20 modules. It was just dabbling a little bit to see what the program had to offer. A lot of conversation with Ms. Keller. I remember one, one teacher specifically, um, she's a very strong teacher, and that's one of the reasons she was the pilot teacher, where we could have those conversations and say, hey, how is the trails going? What are you seeing? If we were to do this, what are you seeing that we need to do on our end to make this successful? And through those frequent conversations, especially with Ms. Keller and the teachers that were piloting it, um, that's what... It, it wasn't in a format like this because we were just looking at it initially to see how it was, but the conversations were happening to make sure it was, a, it was appropriate. Um, but the 20 modules, that wasn't done last year anywhere. Um, the full program wasn't. When did we actually start talking about trails? You remember? I'm not sure when this exactly was, but the first five lessons are, it was February, I believe. The first five lessons are foundational. So we're mostly focusing on those to see if we believed in the foundation of it. So that's mostly what we were focusing on. Yeah. And then morning meetings, we just hit on this earlier in that one of those slides, like this is the morning meeting book that we bought one for every grade level back in the day. And it's just that culture building. So we've been, we've been gathering our kids, whether it's called a morning meeting, but some teachers, because their schedule, it might be an afternoon. It might be right before the end of the day. Um, but just different ideas, uh, group trades is this page hands up. It's a little game that you can do. Um, if you're, uh, they're kind of longer, but I won't start reading them to you, but you're free to look at that anytime. But that's where it all really started a few years ago. Even before that, teachers were talking to their kids about things. But we had this, and then we're like, hey, this is an opportunity we heard of to provide more of a consistent format. Um, and that's what started that conversation and had us first expose and ask for volunteers to, to pilot the trails program on a small scale. And then once the feedback came back very strong on that, that's where we wanted to have, I mean, we, you have to have buy-in. If, if two teachers that are piloting it loved it, but the other 37 teachers don't like it, it's not going to work. So as a way to get more buy-in and more conversation, more eyes on it, that's why it went this year to more people. We got everybody trained, uh, give us your opinion, and let's start talking about it. So we've had, I think, three, um, we call them our PBIS staff meetings this year, but that's where we come in our own. We're not talking about math. We're not talking about ELA at those staff meetings. We're specifically talking about how is it going? What are you seeing? What's working? What's not working? What changes do we need to make? Because our, I mean, our teachers are awesome. We hit on that. We, we want to hear from what they're seeing. Um, yeah, good question. Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay. So, were you saying if I Sure. Yeah. Sometimes we see that students can get stuck in their, their thoughts and it can be hard for them. Like I think they give an example of, you know, another student didn't apologize. And sometimes, you know, we have students in our building who, you know, might have, might have a different thinking pattern as them, um, or it might be harder for them to verbally say they're sorry. Maybe they're a younger student and they don't have the words to say that yet. Um, and yeah, so it's just helping them to kind of reframe their thought and to, to take a situation where maybe they would sit stuck, you know, in the hallway, one of those students that I would sit with for a while to like help get them out of that stuck thought, but giving them that tool um, to then, yeah, reframe their thought to think, 
you know, this really is a hard situation or, you know, that's, that's hard that this peer didn't apologize, but, you know, reframing that, like, I'm okay. And, you know, I know that when, when I do something that I need to correct, I'll say, sorry, you know, I'm okay. And then, you know, just, you're right. Reframing, reframing the situation. Okay. Their thought. Yeah. The staff yeah. survey, uh, the staff survey was a survey and I'm not talking. Yeah, yeah correct. I mean, no. Yeah, no, it does. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm a big believer in relationships um, and, and add on here, but I'm thinking of, of, of a situation where if a kiddo is having this problem, we want them to be comfortable here. So as a district, I mean, we're providing these kind of supports now, but we also, kids have to want to be here if it's going to be successful. If you're kicking and screaming every day that you don't want to be in school, um, if you drop a kid off, like I like meeting the kids out front every morning, and we're like welcoming them to school and trying to get off on a positive note. Um, I, I know exactly what you're saying, um, but I think through this, through the relationships, through making kids feel comfortable and supported at school, that goes a long way. Um, and, and getting, getting I, I think one of you mentioned earlier, getting in that right headspace to learn, um, that, that's our number one goal. I mean, we want kids to want to be here. We want kids to be ready to learn. And that's the only way we can get down to the academics is if we're ready, if we're truly ready to learn. But any Yeah, and I think that would be a conversation with the student who is, you know, using the information inappropriately, just like we would have a conversation if, you know, someone was making fun of someone's outfit or if they didn't like the way a student talked or looked, it would be that mm -hmm. same type of conversation. We try to use everything as a, like a learning opportunity here. We don't want to just, oh, well, you were bullying, you have a consequence now. We want to use that as a teaching opportunity for the student who was being bullied. And then if the student that, you know, was being bullied, we could provide support for that student as well. Okay. Yeah. And, and the intent behind everything is to make a safe space. Um, I mean, yeah. for it to be a truly safe space, you have to be proactive in your teaching to make sure kids are not taking the negative or taking something. Like if somebody goes out on a limb to share something, uh, a, a safe space does not mean that little Billy over here is taking that and we're going to throw rocks and make fun of the kiddo for at recess time for that. I mean, the yeah. idea behind it is a safe space, like a strong classroom culture where kids are there for one another, the teacher's there for everybody. Um, it, it, it's safe to share that without fear of repercussions. But then right back to what Ms. Plum says, if something were to be, what were to happen, then it gets addressed, I mean, immediately for sure. Yes, sir. And you're talking if a kiddo doesn't want to share something?
Kevin has bought into that idea that you guys are presenting. We have children being vulnerable in that class. And social media to the personal stuff is spread like that. And if that kid is not used to expressing himself in that situation, that's too much, feels it is safe, it's supposed and it's supposed to be safe, and it's almost forced to be safe. Otherwise, you face disappears of not accepting what she is being what you guys are proposing. And I just think that uh, there really is no way that you can protect yourself like that. Especially when you have parents at home that are like, we don't know you. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to uh, equip our kids, you know, because we feel in in the dark of things and we don't know what you guys are really teaching us. We hear things from different parents that these kids see this, these kids see this, and you guys don't up front show those things, which is what we're here for, what we're concerned about. And uh, I just think that those things in the classroom can be a lot more harmful to kids outside of the whole narrative that it's a great thing, which it is. There's good things about it. Like it's obvious. It sounds great. I just think that there's big downfalls in our kids to suffer about the bad. Before, Margaret, do you have a question or do you want to? Yeah, I just want to ask. Yeah. Oh, um, uh -huh. Okay, I just making sure. Um, so, I mean, a couple of thoughts that I have. I, I don't think it works. Like, if I, if I tell you, hey, you're going to feel safe today. Does that, does that do what it takes to make you feel safe? To me, it wouldn't. Like if somebody's telling me that, safe is not being, a, safe is not a directive. Safe is a feeling that you have through the culture that the teachers are creating. Um, so you might come in and we'll say, hey, we want this to be a safe space, but it's not saying that that makes kids feel comfortable. It's the actions and the follow-up that, that if a kid's gonna feel comfortable, it's that that's gonna get them to that point. Um, the, you, I mean, you make, a, you make a lot of good points. I know through our morning meetings, through, through, our, through the trails lessons, kids don't have to share. Um, I've been in plenty of teacher observations where they're doing this and, and kids are like, I, I don't wanna share today. That's fine. It's not, it's not being like, no, you will, you will share. Um, no, no, if a kid doesn't wanna share, if a kiddo is not comfortable, then absolutely that's all right. So we, we, we move on. So not forcing somebody to, um, and maybe we've seen it before where maybe for the first couple of weeks, a kiddo doesn't wanna share. But then after you've had time to kind of build and model and, and display what it looks like, then, then they feel safe. Not because you told them to, they feel safe because of what, what, what culture has been built. And then they start sharing. Um, you're right. I mean, there's, we can never guarantee that things are always going to go according to plan. Um, if you can guarantee me anything in life like that, right, there's always going to be hiccups. Um, so it's, it's just addressing those hiccups as, as they come up. But we, we've been fortunate. I have not heard now in the little bit of dabbling last year. And then, and then piloting more widespread this year. I've not heard of any issues in our building where a kiddo had challenges at a later date because of something that they shared during the trails lesson. Yeah, I think that's always kind of something that is not in one sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure, um, and I understand and I hear what you're saying. I'm not sure if there's a direct connection between trails specifically to, like, I don't think trails eliminates that. I mean, if there's situations going on, social media, you're right. If, if there's different things going on, I, I don't want to say that trails is the reason that those rumors are being spread per se. Um, so we have trails, and then we have the fact that sometimes that kind of thing happens and it needs to be addressed. But um, am, I, am, I, am, I saying, am I saying and hearing that right? Like, I... I, I know that we have the trails and we have the instruction, but the things that you're talking about maybe are not directly related to trails. Oh yeah, trails is gonna fix everything.
And I think regardless whether we use trails or not, children share things at school. They share personal things. They, if you do something, but if you do something at home, like, oh, my mom, you know, accidentally locked the keys in the car. We hear about it. I mean, kids naturally want to share and, and we're just giving them a space we don't ask deep questions every day with trails. Like sometimes our, our yeah. questions are, what's your favorite flavor, flavor of ice cream or different things like that. So kids are going to share, excuse me, kids are going to share regardless. We would handle it the same way we would if they would share something like that. If it's something personal, we could talk to them on their own. We could refer them somewhere. We wouldn't encourage that type of sharing that you're discussing in a giant group setting. And I, I, I appreciate that, but at the same time, you ask your kid, are you there? You ask the kid, are you feeling and they, they identify that, they start associating. It's safe to express the same sad thoughts you play. What else is in that part of their mind? Because they're accessing a part of their mind where there's a lot of those thoughts associated with, with that feeling. So maybe it's just this benign little thing that, oh, I'm sad because my brother took my skill. Now I feel sick expressing it. That's just one little big step and the next, the next thing makes you feel safe. Damn it. And when he gets to that step, the other kids start to laugh. I look at them here. They're not even allowed to say it in class, but that's wrong. But for the kids, they laugh at everything. They will find something. To do. My son does it to me. You know, it's the way they are. I just want to add, I've, I've sat in on a lot of these morning meetings, and it really is a, a great culture in the classrooms. The teachers do a great job facilitating that space for kids to share. And I have never sat in and, and seen a kid laugh at another student. I actually saw it was the most precious moment this morning. A young five student come in having a really hard morning. And another student came up and saw that the other student was having a hard time and gave him a hug. And the other student smiled. Kids are noticing each other's feelings. And they see that and they want to meet them there. And that's what we're trying to do is provide that space for them to do the same thing. And now we're seeing students recognize each other's feelings and they're making those connections. They're feeling supported by their peers too. And that's, that's what we're trying to do. And I think of a similar situation. We have D.A.R.E. D.A.R.E.'s in fifth grade. Um, Deputy Modica from the Monroe County Sheriff's Office comes in for about 12 weeks. Tomorrow's actually the day we read our essays. But there were two kiddos in the office last week, two weeks ago now, something like that. Um, one boy, maybe not making the best decisions we're talking it out right there and, and the girls like hey think about what we learned in dare with deputy modica and like you couldn't even script this i can't even make it up this it had never happened before until that moment she's like remember that lesson on being being respectful or do you think you're being respectful right now like that language that the fifth graders had similar to the language that miss keller's talking about but you have to you have to give kids that language we're not we're not digging we're not crying we're just giving kids tools and language to 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 talk to each other to be, to be respectful, to be responsible. I see a lot of commonalities. I mean, it's different, but there's a lot of commonalities between DARE, which has been taught forever, and um, in, in, in trails, and in, in a lot of, in the approach. Um, I'm gonna, I, did you have your hand up in the back? Yeah, you still wanna go? I'm sorry. Very fundamental. It's like at their level, and 
No, I mean, thank you. We appreciate that. I think we have about three more. And then at that point, I think you have your hand up. So did you have one more, ma'am? Yep. Well, maybe it was missing. Okay. So if we go these three and then it's already 730, I definitely don't want to keep anybody, but um, we we're I'll be here all, all day, every day this week. Stop in if, if there's more questions that you're just not comfortable asking in front of everybody or whatever the case might be. I mean, do let us know. But uh, Miss Gizzy, can I'll start here and then bounce over this way. No, go ahead, ma'am. So I, I feel like it, if, if I don't want to say it in a way where it's this or nothing, I think it is a giant step backwards. If we have to start all over, there's other programs such as this. I think we're having the same conversation uh, just because of the, the, the alertness and just our level as a, not only our community, but I mean, worldwide right now, this is not, this conversation is not only happening in Dundee, it's happening a little bit North of us. It's happening ev everywhere. Um, I don't know if we're going to escape the conversation and find something that is going to satisfy everybody to a T. Um, there are other programs. Um, we could definitely go back and start looking at them. We started to a couple of years ago. Um, then when we when trails caught the traction that it did, um, both at the state level through the Monroe County, the, the uh, ISD, that's really why it's in front of us today. But it's also something that's an inside out program, meaning like our teachers knew that we needed something. This is not a top down. This is not coming from the state to Mr. Manuzak to us. And we're shoving it down the teacher's throat saying, you're going to teach this. This is something that teachers recognize as being a need probably more now than ever, because you're right, if you're a third grader, you've never really had a normal year of instruction if you look at what the past few years have looked like. I mean, kids' worlds have been rocked. Our worlds have been rocked recently. Um, it's an inside out initiative. We're trying to support teachers in their, in, in their fight to support kids. There are other programs out there that we could look at, but I, again, I, I just don't think that there's going to be like, oh, that's the, that's the one right there. We're having the same conversation with the next program if there is one. That would you? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Parents. 
been going on and nothing's been said to us, then we try to deal with it and we are shut down. And when you have a state board on Budminton telling us to get an attorney, okay, so that's where a lot of it's coming from. So I appreciate you guys giving us overview and I appreciate you ask, answering questions and I'm glad you're taking the measures that you are. I feel a little better about it. I'm not sure I'm all in, but you know, I can at, at least trust that something's being done. But my question is how much time a day is being spent on these? How much time is being taken away from academics? Because we all know the United States is way far in math, science, reading. Those are the things I think we need to be concentrating on. Not saying that mental health is not an issue and that doesn't need a space or attention. But how much of my child's class time is being taught with this and taken away from the poor subject? Right. And I'm comfortable answering that. Um, really, it's 10 to 15 minutes a day, and that was already spent doing morning meeting, class, and team building activities. So it's not really taking any new time. It's just being put into something that we already did. So as you saw in our schedule, it's only two days a week. And then on the other days, we're already teaching expectations and going over things like that. So that's just something that was already in our day and we found a way to make this fit. So it's not taking any additional time. Yeah. And, I, and I think somebody asked a question earlier about mental health and academics going hand in hand. Um, I, I feel like that's a great, a great piece too. Um, not trying to, to take the place of anybody, not by any means, just trying to get kids in the right mindset to give them an opportunity to have that team, that culture. I know a lot of times discipline, discipline and relationships go a long way. Um, as a teacher, one thing I didn't have a lot of was discipline issues. Um, and that's because I felt like I connected with the kids that you have to make a, a conscious effort to do that. Um, you make a conscious effort to connect with kids. You have that relationship. Kids want, they don't want to let you down. Um, a lot of that is exactly what Ms. Plum is saying. Um, it's, it's not additional time taken out of the, the three R's or, or anything like that. Um, it's just, it's just a, a way to take what we've really been doing for a long time. When I mentioned, I mean, the best rules, when I mentioned, um, character education, things that we've done for a long time, this is just, it's like moving from this math program to this math program. It's, it's like moving from character ed to this, um, it, it, very similar. So no additional time, not by any means. You're right. I mean, academics are important, but we have to have kids ready to learn and not, not all kids are, um, to get them ready to learn. We're not prying, we're not pushing. It's just helping to build that that environment. Yeah. Um, yes, ma'am. Yeah, that's a hard one. And that's something is that I, I don't think I have an answer for tonight. I'm not sure if you guys have any great ideas. That's something I'd be interested in having additional conversation on. You're right. It's it's not a kiddo's, um, I don't want to say fault, but it's not on them that um, the, the decision is being made to potentially opt out of the diversity lesson, for example. Um, we don't want it to be a punishment for them, but it's also a, a, like a logistical struggle too. That I think the logistical side is what we'll have to figure out. Um, because it's hard if a teacher is doing a lesson here and a lesson there, and it's not all being done at the same time across the entire building. Um, it would almost take a, like I'm picturing one person to just be with that, with those kids that are opting out. But I think there's a lot more conversation that can be had about it, not making it, not trying to make it a punishment by, by any means. I don't have a good answer tonight for you about how we can, how we can opt them out, but not make it appear that way. Isolation is a word that, that I think you use, sir. I mean, we're not trying to isolate kids. I mean, you can tell from here, that's kind of the opposite of what we're attempting to do here, that, that feeling of isolation. Okay, and I think the last question for tonight, I'll be up here, but at that point, we're going to cut you loose um, to, if you haven't got dinner, get that, because I'm starving. Okay. Sir. Um, I heard tonight um, that I see making a good effort is to mm -hmm. teach your mother's family and teach them how to read. And that's what I think is a really good idea. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm not sure if there's any other ideas that come to mind, but the trails seem to start, and then again, this year expanded. There's a lot of uh, when stuff like that happens, it, it can sow a seed of distrust, right? Mm -hmm. Because people don't know what's happening, right? And I know you wanted to decouple the, you know, how yeah. it was implemented from the actual program. 
And that, that would be a good thing if we could, but there, you know, there is like, and I'm not blaming or no, I, I don't know who's who or who did or, or how, how that happened, but here we are now, right? We, here we are now with a certain program that has <coughs> benefits and concerns, right? Mm -hmm. And um, and it was brought in without a lot of knowledge. And then there's a, uh, and I don't know who is the uh, impedance to uh, showing what it is, but there, there's an impedance that people are talking about. So um, how do we get through that? Um, how do we have actually more transparency? You, you said tonight, oh, well, let's go through the last and we can go through it now. Obviously we're out of time, we can't do mm. that, but is there gonna be future town halls or future times where we can come together and look at these things? And also, and finally, um, you said you weren't sure if it could be given because of copyright. Um, can someone check into that? Is there, yeah. um, are there non disclosures that people can sign that or that say we're not going to violate copyright law? Um, if we get an electronic copy or hard copy of it, so that people can look at it and see what's actually in it, especially the, the filter version they have, right? Because mm -hmm. it's a little bit different than. Um, what the whole trails is. Right. Um, I th I'm gonna, I think Marcos has something to add here and then I'll go. So, uh, yes, they are looking into it about the copyright. And so we've got a request from uh, someone else that somebody had requested to have a copy of it. And so they are looking into it. And so I And, and this, there's a lot of new here. Um, like I think back to multiple schools. I'm very familiar with all of Monroe County after, after being in this role for a long, as long as I have now. I mean, I've really gotten to know the elementary principals around the county. And procedures are very, very similar at different schools. Um, when we piloted math programs a couple of years ago, it, it, I'm not saying it's right because it's always been done that way, not by any means. But this is the first time that the procedures of this have been questioned. Um, because this is more of a, I don't want to say it's more, I think it's fair to say, it's more of a sensitive topic than what math instruction or what math programming you're using to, to teach kids. So when we did a math adoption a couple of years ago, there were different programs being taught so we could look at it and see the value of them, uh, the effectiveness of them. And from the beginning, there's never really been, and this is something that we can work on, but there's never been something saying, hey, you're your kiddo is going to pilot the Saxton math program for the next two weeks, or your, your kiddo is going to pro, or pilot the everyday math program for the, the rest of the semester. Um, it was never a concern then. It was never brought up. It wasn't viewed. I think the one thing I've learned more than anything here is when you don't know how to address hurdles when you can't predict what the hurdles are going to be. Um, through this process, more hurdles that popped up than through the adoption of any other program that we've ever, ever used. And we've always followed a very similar format. So with this one being a little more sensitive, that's where a lot of this comes from. But it's a learning experience for all of us. I'm not going to pretend like we have all the answers. We have it all figured out. But I've learned a lot through this that we would do differently as an elementary. Um, one thing I would encourage is come ask me questions. I think I've gotten as the elementary principal two questions all year on trails. Um, and, and, I, and I think I'm probably one of the ones that are most familiar with it because we're kind of we're in the trenches with it. Um, and not putting, not putting it back on... I mean, I feel like I'm saying, well, it's on you. You haven't asked me questions. That's not what I'm saying. But I, I ask me. Um, I feel like that has not happened. Um, and I feel like I try to have an open door policy with families. I try to connect with families. I would appreciate the opportunity to have that conversation. Um, and have you guys had a lot of parent questions regarding trails? So it's kind of, they, 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 yeah, I, I, I've had some. I, I welcome your questions. Don't feel like you're, yeah, yep, and I understand that. I, 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 I would like to ask that you, if you have questions or if you want to look at things specifically too, um, there's different protocols and procedures that we have to follow definitely. But if, if you want to know more about this and like, hey, what, what came out of that? Um, what do you guys do to that diversity lesson? I have a concern about that. I'd love to talk to you about that. Um, and there's things that I know and we know that maybe Mr. Manuzak and Ms. Winnell don't know, not a matter of them not caring or not being involved. They've been very hands-on, but they're not actually in the building and on that, on that team that's looking at the lessons. And if there's specific questions like that, do, do please ask. Um, 
and really anytime. Just like following this meeting as we wrap it up now, um, stop in, email, call, whatever it takes. We want you to be comfortable. We're trying to dispel a lot of the rumors. A lot of the things, like these are the questions and answers, and we didn't get to a lot of them, and, and we're already keeping you until eight o'clock. But does the trail, does the trails program address spirituality? Um, there's a lot of things like that out there. Do we talk about kids about suicidal thoughts? Uh, not in Dundee, not at the elementary school, at least. Um, are teachers going to diagnose students? No, we're not diagnosing kids. Are there mental health screening and, and are you monitoring and then like doing something with the data? No, none of that is being done. Um, does it influence a child's identity, worldwide view or core values? Uh, nope, not the way we're doing it. Like there, I have a list of like 12 things right here and I, I hear it because I'm a member of the community, right? I, I hear and I'm, I'm not naive or, or not ignoring what's going on. Um, but like there's so much misinformation regarding it. We just want the opportunity to dispel that and in that misinformation. Um, I know a few things were mentioned tonight. I think, sir, you had a few concerns that you mentioned. None of that, none of that is, none of that is being done. Yep. Um, and I'll, I mean, I think spirituality was a big one. Diagnosing, di diagnosing and treating kids was a big one. Systemic racism. Um, mm -mm. There's, there's a lot of that, but that is not a part of what we are doing. We're just, we're, our attempt is to support kids. Yes, ma'am. Last one. Last one. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Do that. So under right now, if you go to the Dundee website, dundeecommunityschools.org, schools, elementary school for parents. There's the, what is social and emotional learning um, in there, right? We talked about those survey results earlier um, and you can scroll down. We didn't spend the time to read you every line of our teacher input, but if you wanted to see what our teachers were saying um, and there's nothing, there's nothing negative in there, but feel free to go there and read that. We do have an SEL FAQ document right here. Um, this will probably be an additional document in this folder. But yeah, we'll take some time. We started to today where we were going to get to, we just ran out of time, but we had a lot of Q and A's built in the ones that were in advance. We were trying to get in there. We'll take these, put them in a different document, add these to it. If you have more, we'll just keep posting to that. So do, do check back for the FAQ document. It'll take a little bit of time because well, this is pretty small font and my, I have quite a few questions, but we'll certainly get that gathered. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. So thanks for coming tonight. Any last parting words? Oh yeah, I'll set these out at the table. This is the, some of those things that were linked out. There's obviously no hyperlinks in paper and pencil, but there's the actual presentation. I'll set those over there if you wanna grab one before you go. If, I, if you run out, holler, I'll make you a few more copies. I think I made 25 and we're probably pretty close to that. Um, but we do appreciate your time tonight. Thank you. Absolutely.